All right, over here on the right in the channel box, I just put an X on everything. Everything that has an X, it's not going to show up in the batch render. Everything that doesn't have an X is going to render out during your batch render. So we want all of those layers to render out. So make sure there's not an X. Okay, we're going to go to our rendering menu set. Go over to our rendering menu and go down to where it says batch render. We're going to click on that and it starts the render. So let's open up our script editor. And go ahead and clear out the history just to make it a little bit easier to read. All right, there we go. It's rendering out our ground diffuse layer right now. If you look over here on the left, you'll see the percentage. There's 60% done, 70%, 80, 90, and 100% done. Now it's doing the ball diffuse layer. <clears throat> now it's the occlusion layer. Now the occlusion layer will take a while, so will the uh, shadow probably a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and stop this. All right, it's all done rendering out. There's our reflection, there's our specular, there's our shadow, uh, there's our occlusion layer. Then our diffuse layers, the ball and the ground. All right, so let's go ahead and go into our project folder and find these. All right, there's our project folder. And they should be in our images folder, subfolder. All right, there they all are. There's our ball diffuse. I'm going to go ahead and rename it to ball diffuse. I'm going to put all these on my desktop just to make it, you'll see why here a little bit. All right, our ground diffuse. Our occlusion. Our reflection. Now there's a master beauty folder. We want the past reflection folder. Remember we created that past reflection? Alright, so we're going to rename that to reflection. Drag that over there. Same thing with shadow and specular. Now if we were to render out a like a whole animation, we had a lot of frames, then each one of these folders would have lots of these. They'd be like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so forth. Okay, so now we don't need these folders. I'll just go ahead and delete all these real quick. Drag them to my trash. All right, there's the ball render that we did. All right, I'm going to go into combustion. You can also, again, you could use GIMP. You can use Photoshop. It's all the same process. All right, combustion is you can use for if you had a lot of frames animation. All right, let's go to our desktop, and there's all the layers that we created: there's our ball diffuse, ground diffuse, occlusion, refract, uh, reflection, shadow, and our specular. I'm gonna select each one of these and click OK. 2D composite. What's like it's looking at footage, but of course it's only one frame. All right, if we look down here in our workspace, you'll see all our layers. I'm going to go ahead and turn them all off, and we'll just do them one at a time. All right, let's start with our ground diffuse layer. Turn it on. I'm just going to drag it down to the bottom. Let's do our ball diffuse next. Drag it down on top of the ground diffuse. We'll do occlusion. Drag it down. Now occlusion, I'm going to click on the uh, layer button over here to the right, and I'm going to change it from normal mode to multiply. All right, let's turn on our uh, specular. We're going to change that layer from normal mode to add or addition, depending on what software you're using. Shadow, all right, now shadow, we need to move in between our ball and ground diffuse layers. If we put it above our ball, obviously it's going to be on top. If we put it underneath our ground, you're not going to see it at all. So it needs to go in between. All right, again, this, uh, let's see, our reflection layer, let's change that to add as well. Now, as far as the shadow goes, um, if you had an object that casts shadows on itself, then those shadows would be behind your object, which you don't want. So that's what I was talking about earlier. All right, let's go ahead and add a background, get rid of that black. So new layer, let's call it background. And it's white, which is fine. Again, we could change that color whatever we wanted to. So let's click OK. And then now we'll go ahead and drag that down to below our ground. Actually, we need to change the uh, size of it. 64 by 480. 
Let's see what the other layers are. They are 1024 by 768, so let's change that. Our background layer to, oops, 1024 by 768. All right, now let's drag that layer down below our ground diffuse layer. All right, there we go. Now we're ready just to make some changes. Let's start with the ground diffuse. We've got that red checkerboard. All right, there we go. Let's add a color correction. Let's say we wanted to change the color of it. Instead of re-rendering out our entire scene, we can just go in here and we can just start tweaking the color. It's kind of a purplish color. Let's make it blue. Something about like that. All right, our shadow. Um, we can change the opacity where it's not so black. Something about like that. We could also add a blur to it to soften it up. So it's a little bit softer there. So we can just sit here and play around with it until we get uh, as soft as we want it. Now again, if um, you rendered out the shadow with your ball visible, you wouldn't be able to do it this way. Before you rendered out, you would want to make sure your shadow is as soft as you want it and then render out in layers because if you did this, it would start, it would soften up the shadow where it's touching the ball, which that would not be good. All right, our ball diffuse, say we want to change the color of the ball. Good. Same thing, we could change the color, go to color correction. And you can see we can easily change it's just so much easier doing it this way than to do it all in Maya. Every time we want to make a change, you have to render out the whole scene here. I mean, we can just sit here and just play with it all day long until we got everything exactly the way we wanted to. And again, if we had a lot of footage, like if let's say we rendered out a uh, hundred different frames, then these changes that we're making now, it would make it to every frame. So you actually don't go in and change the color for every single frame. You just do it on one of the frames and it it just it makes it for all of them. Hope that makes sense. All right, let's just go with something about like this. All right, um, occlusion. You can change the occlusion. Just playing with the opacity. That's an easy way to mess with it. Uh, specular reflection. Same thing. We change the opacity if we didn't want it as much reflection, or if we didn't want any any reflection at all. Uh, you can just take it all the way down to zero. We'll give it a little bit. Uh, as far as if you made a change and you didn't like the change and you, you could delete it really easy. Uh, so let's say we didn't like our the change we made to our ball. We can just go down here and select our color corrector and just delete it. There we go. Wiped out. But I'll go ahead and leave it. So let's go ahead and undo that. All right. Let's... Um, Got everything the way we want it, at least for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and save this image. So go to File, Save Image. Let's change it to a JPEG. Click OK. Make sure we're on our desktop. Go to our Render Passes, which is our project folder. Let's go to our Images subfolder, and let's save this as Ball Render 2. Image quality, we'll change to 100% close. All right, let's go see what we got. There's our images subfolder and there's the two renders. So there it is. And then there's that's made changes. And it looks like our reflection needs to be changed because we've got red checkers in our reflection. So we'll need to go in and change that, which is easy to do. Again, any kind of changes, it's just so much easier just to open up a compositing package and make changes in there. So let's go ahead and go back into combustion and we'll change those red to blue. So there's our reflection layer. Let's add a color correction. And 
Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and open up our um, ground diffuse, and we could see exactly the change we made to it, specific, the specific settings, and we could do the same thing for our reflection. But for this tutorial, uh, no need. I'll just make it look right. And we want the reflection a little bit lower. Then resave it out. So again, really easy to do. Let's call this one Ball Render 3. Once you start rendering out this way and, and passes, you'll never go back to just rendering out a single footage in Maya. It's just so much easier and to do it this way. And there we go. Now we've got our uh, blue color and our reflection.